Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about the London Spitfires 2020 roster. London Spitfire finished 7th overall last season with a 16 and 12 plus 6 differential. Uh, of the eight teams that made the playoffs, the London Spitfire had the worst differential in the league. Uh, despite having one game over Seoul Dynasty, they had eight worse differential. The next lowest was the Hangzhou Spark, who had plus 12. So they were in the top eight, but they were in the top eight by record and <clears throat> not much more. Um, their differential wasn't great. They weren't winning big. They weren't impressing with, with a lot of big wins. So... They, they struggled in 2019, uh, unlike what they did in 2018, where they struggled for a lot of uh, 2018 as well, but they, they pulled it out in the end by you know, going all in and winning the world, uh, or by winning the grand finals. But now uh, we look at the team. That team is no more. Uh, that London Smith Fire is long gone, and we have to take a look now at the new look London Spitfire. So almost every single player that was on this team last season is now gone. Nuss and Guard uh, and Bedoshin and Quatermain not on a team right now. Bedoshin not being on a team kind of surprises me because I think Bedoshin was a very good player and I'm surprised that there's teams out there that haven't looked at Bedoshin and been like, let's pick him up because he's a pretty good player. Um, that surprises me. Uh, Bird Ring is now with the LA Gladiators. Gesture and Profit are with Soul. Fury is with the Philadelphia Fusion. And we also saw, uh, saw some coaching changes. Uh, Agape is now their head coach. And they brought on Twinkle, Pavan, and Awesome Guy to be their uh, assistant coaches. So, very different roster, though Agape has been there in the past. Uh, with a pretty solid coaching staff, though I'm a little hesitant to call it uh, really good. Um, but it's a lot of players who have experience, or it's a lot of coaches that have experience, so. Yeah, so let's take a look at this roster. Big thing to note for this roster, uh, the majority of the players on this roster do not come from the Overwatch League. A lot of them come from contenders. Some of them come from very bizarre places in contenders. I don't know a lot about a lot of these players, uh, so I'm just going to tell you where they come from, tell you what results they've had, uh, and go from there. So we're going to start with the damage dealers. The first, the big one, of course, is Glister coming out of Gen G, uh, which is the Soul Dynasty uh, Academy team. Glister, I would say probably the best signing they had uh, is Glister. A very good player known for uh, his Doomfist, his Widow, his Hanzo, his Reaper. Uh, he can play uh, a decently deep hero pool. And uh, I think that's a, a good thing for him and i think glister is going to be one of the bright spots on the slow the fire roster uh just based on everything that i've seen and heard about him uh, i think he's he's definitely going to be where they find most of their success they also have shui who is formerly of runaway uh obviously runaway did very very well uh especially in contenders so he was not on this team uh, when Runaway won the second season of 2019 Korean Contenders. Uh, but he was on the team in the first season of 2019 Contenders. So I don't know why. Uh, this says he was on some team called the Chongju Hunters. Um, I don't know anything about that. Uh, it looks like it was just like a thing that he did with a bunch of like friends or whatnot. But Shui is another good player. Obviously, he was on Runaway. Uh, I don't know if Runaway got rid of him or, or what, but a very strong player as well. Played on a team that had a lot of success. So you're bringing in someone who has that experience and, and has been on a, a solid roster. Next is Babel, who comes from BM Hawk, which I don't even know what BM Hawk is. They don't even have a, a, like a real Liquipedia page. Uh, so... <laughs> He's coming from a team that played in uh, Season 2 of Korean Open Division. Uh, didn't get in. They lost to X6. Got 4th in Open Division. 
Uh, they played in the Zotac Cup Overwatch Community Tournament 37, 33, and 27, uh, where his team won all of those. Um, they also wa were in the 26th one, where they got second. And the 18th one they won. Uh, so they got first in Open Division 2019 Season 1 Korea. Um, so he's been around. He's a hit scan player, so we'll we'll see what 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 comes from him. But he's been on a very interesting team. We have although, who also comes from Gen. Oh no 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 no! He doesn't come from Gen G. I'm sorry. He comes from Gen S. Which, if you don't know anything about Gen S, which I don't blame you because no one, no one should. Uh, let me let me explain to you the 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 way that Gen. G works because we're gonna get back to this in a second here. So Gen, so obviously you have Gen G, which is your academy team, which is below the Soul Dynasty. So the top is the Soul Dynasty, right? Below them is Gen G. Then Gen G has three teams below it: Gen A, Gen B, and Gen S. Although is coming from Gen S. Uh, let's see. They got third in the Overwatch Korea Cup November online qualifier number three. They got third in the Overwatch Korea Cup monthly finals of, for October. They got third in the Overwatch Korea Cup monthly finals for September. Uh, they competed in a lot of uh, Overwatch Korea Cups and got third and second and fourth and third. They never got first in any of those things. So... Eh, he's coming from a, a pretty unknown team. Uh, I, Glister and Shui are going to be the, the highlights for this team on the damage dealers. I, I, just, I don't know what to say about a lot of these players. They picked up a bunch of no-names that could be really good, could be really bad. I have no idea what to expect from them. And we're just going to have to wait and see. Because I certainly don't know uh, who these players are and what they're going to do. So... That's that. Next, we have the tanks, which they once again have four tanks, um, just like they have four damage dealers. And they have a very, <laughs> another interesting uh, roster here. Though I will say their tanks are much better known as a whole. Now I will say like, you know, Glitter and Shui come from, from well-known teams. Their main tank, their, their player that I would assume is their starting flank main tank comes from a well-known team as is their starting flex tank. So their main tank, that I assume will start is J-Mac. He comes from LGE Huya, which is a Chinese contenders team. Uh, they are the uh, contenders uh, team, the academy team for the Chengdu Hunters. And Chengdu Hunters, of course, or sorry, LGE Huya made the gauntlet. Uh, they won Chinese contenders season two. Um, in 2019, they won season one of Chinese contenders. Uh, they have, they, team, I want to say team CC. LGE Huya is a team that has had a lot of success in China over the past year, uh, but outside of China, they have struggled. Uh, they got, you know, they got eliminated by Talon Esports at the Pacific Showdown. They lost, or they got eliminated by Gladiators Legion uh, at the Gauntlet. You know, Talon Esports did very well at the Gauntlet and, and did pretty well at the, the, um, Pacific Showdown, so you got to give them credit for that. We'll give them credit to do, but that's not a you know, Talon Esports isn't from a very strong region. They're from one of the, you know, they're from the Pacific, which isn't a super strong region. Gladiators Legion was the fourth best team out of North America, and they beat the best team in China 3 0 in the gauntlet. So you, you have a player coming from a team that isn't that good outside of China. Um, so that is something he does have history playing with other teams. He played with White Whale, Inchun, Esports, and played with Foxes for a while. So we will see kind of what he does and, and how he plays. I, I think he'll he'll do fine. Um, I'm not too worried about him as a player, but he is coming with a lot of baggage in the sense that he played for a team that was okay. Uh, you know, he, he played for a team that didn't have a ton of success outside of China. Uh, and I think that's going to be a huge 
thing to see when he plays against competition that's better than what he was running into in Contenders China. How well is he going to do? Their other main tank is Jihan, who is coming out of Bubble Burster Gaming, which is a Contenders China team, uh, who got pretty low on the thing. Uh, he's a uh, Wrecking Ball player. That's that's what he's here for. So when they need a Wrecking Ball, it's going to be Jihan. Next, their flex tanks. Their starting flex tank is going to be Bernar, who comes from Fusion University. So obviously, if you know anything about Fusion University, you know that they were one of the best teams in, well, they were the best team in North America for a long time um, until they moved to Contenders Korea, where they didn't do as, as well because their roster wasn't as many Korean players um, as some of the others. But he was with... Fusion University when they won Contenders 2018 Season 2 and 3 and 2019 Season 1 and the Atlantic Showdown uh, with Fusion University and then also the Korean Contenders Trials for Season 2 in 2019. Uh, and then they got 5th through 6th, you know, they got the 5th, 6th position in Contenders 2019 Season 2. Um, they were eliminated by Runaway. So Bernard's a good player. He's, he's definitely one of the best pickups this team has. Uh, I think he'll do pretty well. Um, so he, he was on a good team. Uh, I'd expect his skills to translate over pretty well into the Overwatch League. I don't think he'll be a, an issue for this team. He's not going to be a Fury level of, of good, but I think he's still going to be very good. And we'll see uh, what he does. Our last player on the tank line is Kleston, who comes from Team Griffin, uh, which was, of course, formerly Kongdu Panthera. Uh, before that, he was with GC Busan Lucia. I don't know what GC Busan Lucia is, but they don't have a Wikipedia page. So he comes from a team that's somewhat successful. I think after uh, all the Kongdu Panthera players left um, to go to the Overwatch League and join the Shanghai Dragons and the, the two that went to the Gladiators, they haven't. They they were kind of a lot weaker. Um, they got bottom three in contenders 2018 season three and they didn't qualify after the season two trials for contenders 2019 in korea so he comes from a team that's well known but i i expect him to be the backup i don't think he's going to play over bernard I, I just i just don't see that happening so that's what that is finally we have the supports oh help me this team I don't even know how to talk about this team without just being confused. So they have four supports. Once again, they have four in every role. Uh, really just kind of going for it, you know. So we'll start with their main supports. The main supports, they have two. They have Fuse, uh, who also plays a little bit of Ana in there as well, but mostly a main support. Fuse is coming from Fusion University. Before that, he was with Gen G. He was with MVP Space before that. So he has been playing on some pretty um, well-known teams. He's an MVP Infinity as well. So this is a guy who's been playing on some really good teams. Um, he's been playing on some at least notable teams. So I think he's uh, one of the better pickups for them. And obviously finished his contender's time with Fusion University uh, in Korea. So I think he's a good player for them. I think he's a good pickup for them. I think he's going to be one of their strongest players. Uh especially as their main support. And he's definitely better than the other option they have, which is Sanguinar, who, as I mentioned, we'll be talking later about the different uh, Gen G teams. He's coming from Gen B. So he's coming from the third team below the Soul Dynasty, Gen B. I didn't think they could get any lower, but they brought someone from Gen S. So they really can get lower uh, than that. He's a main support player. I don't expect to see a lot of him. Uh, to be completely honest with you, I expect Fuse to be the guy that plays for the most part, but uh, to me, what it seems like they are doing is for every role, they're kind of taking a risk and they're going something that I think is somewhat safe. They're going for contenders players from some of these really well-known contenders teams like Fusion University, like Runaway, like uh, Gen G, like Team Griffin, which is, that one's a little bit more of a risk than, than some of the other ones are, but they're going after these players who come from teams that are, are well-known, or they're taking players from the Overwatch League, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then they're di dipping deep into contenders to try to find this, this talent that they think is just like 
a diamond in the rough, completely uncut gem, like they can turn them into a really good player and they have to try to manage that and work that and, and somehow find a way to make sure that they can find success with this team. And I think it's been very difficult. Um, I think a lot of these kind of diamond in the rough players are going to be very difficult for them to, to utilize. And I think that's really going to be something that we see them struggle with a little bit. Um, their flex supports are probably their best uh, position on the roster, just in terms of players themselves. They bring in Hailey, uh, who's with the Seoul Dynasty last season, uh, joined uh, midway through the season. But before that, he was with O2, uh, world game star h2 so he has he has some um some some history playing with some well-known teams um but he was at the soul dynasty didn't play a lot uh, i know he, he played some games didn't play a ton uh he might be their starting flex support he might not be they also have krillin who was on the roster last season he is the only player from last season london spitfire to return uh, he didn't play much last season. He was a player who did really, really well in, like, open division, I think, and trials and whatnot um, that they they brought him in because they thought he would be a good player, and he's the only player returning from that roster last season. I don't know if, who will start between Hiley and Krillin. I think they're both probably similar uh, in, in play style, but the fact that they kept Krillin on the roster means he'll probably be the guy that gets a start, but honestly, who knows at this point. This roster is really weird, and you may have noticed throughout this video that I don't know anything about a lot of these players, and not many people do. You know, you can follow Korean contenders and, and Chinese contenders, and you could follow all of the contenders regions, and you would still have never heard of some of these players, because some of these players are coming from areas that they just are not important, you know, they're coming from tier four, tier, you know, they're coming from like tier three, tier four Overwatch. Um, I don't even know if you could say that they're coming from those because they're, they're playing on like super small tournaments that don't mean anything that people aren't watching um, on the regular basis because you don't expect that to be the region where you look for, for talent. And that says a lot about the London Spitfire, that they're constantly searching for talent. They're looking everywhere. They're really looking for those diamonds in the rough in a, in a way that not a lot of teams are. And I respect them for doing that. They're really looking everywhere for Overwatch League talent, for players that they think are good enough to get in the league. However, I think that this team is a huge risk. I don't expect this team to be a, a super good team. I think they have a chance to potentially have a... Uh, a pretty good peak, but I don't think they're a championship peak. Uh, I don't think they're a top eight peak. I think they're a play in tournament peak. Um, I just don't see this team being a team that makes a playoff run. They may not even make the playoffs. I'm not super confident in this team. I'm not super sold on this team. I, I don't like what they're doing. I think you can take risks and you can play this money ball approach where you can sign a bunch of players that people haven't really heard of or a bunch of players that aren't coming from you know your big name contenders teams though some of them are um you know but they didn't make that big signing that i think people would have liked to see and something that i've seen a lot of people say is if you're going to go this route of just completely rebuilding your roster completely gutting it why even bother building a korean roster at that point why not just go for like a, a fan favorite like just uk only roster you know because you're gonna have to try to get people to come to the home stands right you're going to have to try to sell homestand tickets to people who want to come see J-Mac and Sanguinar and Glister and Krillin. And I think it's going to be difficult for that uh, reason. Uh, this London Spitfire roster is weird. Um, and I, I just don't really know how to place them. I don't really know how to like figure them out. Um, but ultimately, I, I don't think they're going to have a ton of success. I think they're going to struggle. Uh, to find their footing in the league, and I think they're going to be one of the weakest teams uh, in in the league. They benefit from playing in the Atlantic because I still think the Atlantic is weaker than the Pacific, uh, though not by as much as I think it was last season. So that is really where we are with the London Spitfire. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe they'll be really good. Um, but I think I think across the board, this roster is a downgrade from what they had 
last season, and they just have to hope that they can get that team play down super well, that they can find a lot of wins in a meta that works for them, um, and they can find a lot of wins not from being the best, the you know the team of the best players, but a team with a lot of really good teamwork and coordination, uh, kind of like we felt the Vancouver Titans last year. Though the Vancouver Titans also had players like Hacksaw and Twilight who were very very good and were, were top of their role, but you know they were being successful with Bumper, who was arguably one of the weakest main tanks um, by by numbers, but they just knew how to play around him. So we'll have to see what happens. But to me, this is a very risky move because you're bringing in a lot of players that have no history playing with each other, and you're just kind of asking them to succeed when a lot of them do not have a lot of history playing against some of these really good players in the league. And I think that they're going to struggle, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but that's it for this video. It's been a little longer than what I expected it to, but the London Spitfire are a very weird roster, and I think they needed it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing. Let me know in the comments down below your personal thoughts on the London Spitfire. But that is all I have for you. So once again, thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.